Hey everyone, and welcome to a deep dive looking into Go and Rust, two languages that seem to be on everyone's mind these days. But uh, we want to cut through all the hype, really see what these languages are all about, and by the end you'll know which one is right for you. Yeah, it's really interesting how they're both going for this idea of you know, efficient, reliable software, but they're taking such different approaches. So let's start with everyone's favorite topic, yeah. performance. We always hear about Rust being faster, but what does that actually mean in practice? Well, think about it this way. If you're working with complex algorithms, you know the kind that are. Crunching massive data sets or powering those high-performance applications, Rust consistently outperforms Go. One of the benchmarks we look at is the binary trees test. And in this test, Rust can be up to 12 times faster. I mean, that's not just like a small little gain. That's a, a complete game changer. 12 times faster. That's got to be like some serious secret sauce they've got going on. What gives Rust that edge? Well, it all comes down to memory management. Rust has this really unique approach with its ownership model and the borrow checker. And they work together to basically eliminate a whole category of errors that can really slow down other programs. Oh, so it's preventing those errors before they even happen. Exactly. Think of it like the borrow checker is this super strict librarian, you know, making sure that every single piece of data is accessed and modified correctly, no conflicts, and everything runs super smoothly. And this avoids garbage collection, which can really bog things down in other languages like Go. So Rust strictness is what leads to that speed because there's no time wasted on cleanup. Makes yeah. sense. But let's talk about scaling. Let's say you're building something that needs to handle massive growth. Tons of users coming in all at once. Which language is better for that? Well, both languages can actually scale effectively, but in different ways. Oh, really? Yeah, Go uses these things called Go routines. They're like these lightweight threads that make it super easy to do concurrent programming. Concurrent programming. That yeah. sounds complicated. It can be, but Go makes it pretty straightforward. Okay, so Go routines make it easier. Right, so think of them like a team of super efficient workers. Each one's handling a small task completely independently. So your program can juggle a ton of different operations at the same time without breaking a sweat. So Go is like a master delegator, keeping everything running smoothly. They're like, what about Rust? How does it handle the pressure? Rust takes a slightly different approach. While it does support concurrency, it often relies on external libraries like Rayon to manage parallel processing. Rayon. Yeah, it's a really powerful library. Basically, it lets you divide your work into smaller chunks and then execute them concurrently across multiple processor cores. So you get some serious performance gains, especially for tasks that are really CPU intensive. Okay, so it sounds like both Go and Rust have their own strategies. Mm -hmm. Go with its built-in Go routines for efficient multitasking. Mm -hmm. And Rust leveraging these external libraries like Rayon for parallel processing. Both sound pretty impressive, but at the end of the day, None of it really matters if your code isn't secure right. Mm -hmm. So how do they stack up on security? You're absolutely right. Security is paramount. Couldn't agree more. And both languages address it, but again, in very different ways. Remember that whole memory management system we talked about with Rust? With the borrow checker and all that. Exactly. Well, it's not just about performance. It's actually a really powerful security feature, too. Oh, interesting. Because it's preventing all those memory-related errors at compile time. Rust basically eliminates a whole class of vulnerabilities that can cause real problems in other languages. So Rust is kind of like having a built-in security guard catching those issues before they can even cause trouble. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. So what about Go then? Go takes a more dynamic approach. It relies on a combination of explicit error handling and some runtime tools to detect and address any potential issues. So you're saying in Go, the developer has to be more proactive. You could say that. You as the developer need to be really diligent in checking for and handling errors throughout your code. But Go does provide some helpful tools like its built-in race detector. It helps uncover potential vulnerabilities during testing. So Go is more about those checks and balances throughout the development process. I can see how both approaches have their advantages and disadvantages. Absolutely. It really depends on your programming style and how much risk you're comfortable with. For sure. So we've covered performance, scalability, and now security. All super important stuff, but at the end of the day. We also want to enjoy writing code, right? I mean, who wants to be pulling their hair out every time they sit down at the computer? So let's talk about the developer experience. How do Go and Rust compare when it comes to just being easy to use? That brings us to the developer experience. You know, at the end of the day, we all want to write code efficiently without, like, tearing our hair out. So how do Go and Rust compare in terms of ease of use? Yeah, I mean, performance and security are great. But if a language is a nightmare to work with, it's going to slow you down. Exactly. And this is where Go really shines. 
It was designed with simplicity in mind, so the syntax is very clear and concise, which makes it relatively easy to learn and master. Plus, the Go community is known for being incredibly friendly and welcoming. There are tons of resources available to help newcomers get up to speed really quickly. So it sounds like Go is a good choice for developers who just want to get things done. Would you say it's like learning to drive an automatic car? Smooth and straightforward. That's a great analogy. Go is definitely designed to get you on the road quickly. Rust, on the other hand, uh, it has a bit of a steeper learning curve. You'll need to invest a bit more time up front to really grasp the concepts, especially the ownership model and the borrowing rule. Right, those can be a bit tricky. They can be, but that investment pays off in the long run. Once you master those concepts, Rust gives you a level of control and precision. That's really hard to match with other languages. So it's more like learning to drive a stick shift. It takes more effort to learn. But you have more control over the machine. Exactly. But not every project needs that level of granular control, right? So how do you decide which language is the right tool for the job? That's the million dollar question. It really boils down to your priorities and the specific needs of the project. So if you need to build something quickly, something that's easy to maintain and scales well, Go might be the perfect fit. Think web applications, APIs, microservices. Those are areas where Go really excels. So Go is the go-to for speed, scalability, and maintainability. Exactly. What about Rust then? When would you recommend reaching for Rust instead? <laughs> Choose Rust when performance is absolutely critical. Like if you're developing performance sensitive applications, things like game engines, operating systems, or embedded systems, Rust also really shines when memory safety and security are non-negotiable because those strict compile time checks help prevent a wide range of errors that could lead to vulnerabilities. So it seems like Go and Rust each have their own sweet spots. Go for getting things done quickly and efficiently and Rust for those projects where performance and security are absolutely crucial. Exactly. It's all about finding the right tool for the job. Couldn't have said it better myself. You know, it's important to consider the strengths of each language and how they align with your project goals and even your own preferences as a developer. Absolutely. And beyond just the technical aspects, the communities around these languages also play a big role in the developer experience, don't they? Wait. Oh, absolutely. Both Go and Rust have these really vibrant and active communities. The Go community is known for being incredibly welcoming and supportive, especially towards beginners. They have excellent documentation and a ton of online resources. And the Rust community is really passionate about building robust and reliable software. You'll often find them engaging in these lively discussions about best practices and advanced concepts. That's great. It sounds like both communities offer a lot of value. So okay. we've explored performance, scalability, security, and the overall developer experience. It's clear that Go and Rust are both incredibly powerful languages yeah. with their own distinct strengths. Exactly, and I think the key takeaway here is that there's no one size fits all winner. The best language for you really depends on your specific needs and priorities. Absolutely, there's no need to get caught up in the hype or feel pressured to choose one language over the other. Take the time to understand your own needs, explore both languages, and see which one really resonates with you. It's fascinating to think about all the possibilities. We've talked about Go and Rust and how they each have their own strengths. But what if we could combine the best of both worlds? Like imagine a language that has Go's simplicity and speed, but also has that same focus on safety and control that Rust has. Well, the interesting thing is that a lot of language development is driven by exactly that idea. You know, taking the best parts of existing languages and combining them to create something even better. So who knows? Maybe someday we'll see a language that truly embodies the best of both Go and Rust. Yeah, maybe someone listening right now will be the one to create it. That's what's so exciting about the programming world. There's always room for innovation and new ideas. So whether you're drawn to Go's pragmatic approach or you're fascinated by Rust's uncompromising power, Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible. That's all for a deep dive into Go and Rust. Happy coding, everyone.